The Stoic Greeks had the maxim known to themselves. How do we in this digital age come to know ourselves in terms of our personalities, and more importantly our potential? In this video, you will learn 8 transformative Stoic techniques to really know yourself. I'll also share a powerful bonus tip with you in this video. So watch the video completely. Embrace this opportunity to delve into the intricacies of your own mind and its limitless capabilities. If you are on a journey towards personal growth and deep self-discovery, stick with us until the end. Let our journey to a more self-aware you begin. Technique number one, watch yourself like you're watching a stranger. Have you ever wondered how differently we might act if we stepped outside ourselves and observed our actions and reactions as if we were someone else? This idea lies at the heart of a powerful stoic technique, observing oneself with the detached curiosity of a stranger. We're often tangled in our web of emotions and biases, leading to a clouded view of who we are. Let's break it down. Imagine you're watching a movie where you are the main character. How would you critique the actions and choices of this character? This shift in perspective allows you to see yourself more objectively, helping you identify habits and reactions that might not align with who you want to be. This isn't about self-criticism, but about gaining clarity. When you watch a stranger, you don't have the emotional baggage that comes with self-observation. You see their actions, good or bad, for what they are. This is what we're aiming for, a clear, unbiased view of ourselves. The Stoics teach us to observe without judgment like a scientist watching an experiment. When you feel anger, rising, step back. Ask yourself, why am I angry? Watch your emotions as if they aren't yours. This practice brings a surprising clarity. Instead of being swept away by emotions, you start understanding their roots. It's not about suppressing feelings, but understanding them from a distance. This perspective is crucial in a world where emotions can be as fleeting as social media trends, yet as impactful as real-life decisions. This shift in perspective isn't easy, but it's powerful. Remember this stoic wisdom by Seneca. We suffer more often in imagination than in reality. By observing yourself objectively, you reduce unnecessary suffering caused by misconceptions and overreactions leading to a more peaceful and authentic life. Technique number two, accept yourself completely, the good, bad, and ugly. You know how. When you look in the mirror, you sometimes focus only on the floors. It's easy to do that with our personalities too. Fixating on our mistakes or the parts of us we don't like. This constant self-criticism creates an inner narrative that's far from kind. But here's the thing. True growth starts with accepting every part of yourself, the good, the bad, and yes, even the ugly. It's about acknowledging your whole self without denial or overemphasis on the negatives. Stoicism isn't about just seeing the bright side, it's about seeing the real side. It teaches us to embrace our entire being. When you accept yourself flaws and all, you're not giving up on improvement. You're starting from a place of honesty, and with honesty comes the power to change. As Marcus Aurelius wisely said, accept the things to which fate binds you, and love the people with whom fate brings you together but do so with all your heart. This acceptance is the foundation of real transformation. Try this. Write down your strengths and weaknesses. Don't shy away from the truths you're uncomfortable with. Now look at this list, not as a judgment, but as a map. Your strengths are your tools. Your weaknesses are areas for growth. Instead of beating yourself up over the ugly parts, ask yourself, how can I grow here? Self-acceptance doesn't mean stagnation, it means empowering yourself to evolve from a place of understanding and compassion. Remember, every part of you has a role in your journey. By embracing every aspect of who you are, you set the stage for genuine self-improvement. It's not about becoming someone else, it's about being the best version of you. Technique number three, challenge yourself continually, but start small. Just as we talked about embracing every aspect of ourselves, there's another step that's just as important, challenging yourself. Yes, accepting yourself is vital, but growth? That happens when you step out of your comfort zone. It's like a muscle that needs both rest and exercise. You've acknowledged who you are now, it's time to see what you're capable of becoming. Stoicism teaches us the value of continuous self-improvement. But here's the key, start small. 
Big leaps can be overwhelming and often lead to setbacks. It's like trying to climb a mountain in one giant step. Instead, take it one small hike at a time. Epictetus said, No great thing is created suddenly. Apply this wisdom by setting small achievable goals, being more patient, try holding back a quick reply in your next conversation, aspiring to be more fit, starting with a short daily walk, not a marathon. Here's something you can do today. Identify one small thing you've been avoiding or wanting to improve. Make a plan to tackle it in the simplest, smallest way. If it's reading more, start with a page a night. If it's speaking more confidently, practice with a close friend or in front of a mirror. Celebrate these tiny victories. They may seem small, but they're the stepping stones to greater achievements. Your potential is like a dormant seed waiting for the steady water of effort and the nourishment of persistence to grow into something extraordinary. Remember, every big journey starts with a small step. By challenging yourself in bite-sized pieces, you're not only building your abilities but also your confidence. Technique number four. Compare yourself to who you were yesterday, not to who someone else is today. Have you ever caught yourself scrolling through social media, feeling a bit down because everyone else seems to be doing better? It's easy to fall into the trap of comparing ourselves to others. But here's the truth. The only fair comparison is with the person you were yesterday. This isn't just about feeling better. It's about recognizing and valuing your own journey and growth. Just like we talked about making small incremental changes, this technique is about measuring those changes. Instead of looking at others and feeling behind, turn your gaze inward. How have you grown from yesterday? Maybe you're a bit more patient, a tad more knowledgeable, or just a little stronger. Marcus Aurelius once said, You have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. Apply this by focusing on your progress, not others' paths. Here is an action you can take. Every night spend a few minutes reflecting on your day. What did you do better today than yesterday? It could be anything. Maybe you listened more closely in a conversation, or you chose a healthier meal. These aren't just achievements. They're evidence of your ongoing evolution. Document these maybe in a journal or a note on your phone. Over time, this record will become a powerful reminder of how far you've come step by step by focusing on your own growth rather than comparing yourself with others. You free yourself from unrealistic and unhelpful standards. You start to appreciate your unique journey, recognizing that each day brings you closer to the person you aspire to be. Technique number five, take responsibility for yourself. There's a powerful shift that happens when you start taking full responsibility for your actions, your thoughts, and your life. It's like grabbing the steering wheel of a car that's been aimlessly drifting. Sometimes we blame circumstances, other people, or luck for where we are. But the truth is, the more we take charge of our responses and decisions, the more we steer our lives in the direction we want to go. Shifting our focus from comparing ourselves with others to reflecting on our personal progress naturally leads us to this next step. Owning our journey. It's about saying, this is my path, and I'm responsible for walking it. Epictetus wisely stated, we cannot choose our external circumstances, but we can always choose how we respond to them. When you embrace this, you empower yourself to respond to life's challenges with maturity and wisdom. Start by identifying areas in your life where you've been placing blame elsewhere. It might be in your relationships or your personal goals. Now ask yourself, how can I take more responsibility in these areas? This isn't about being harsh on yourself. It's about recognizing your power to change things. For instance, if a project at work isn't going well, instead of blaming the team, consider what you can do differently to improve the situation. This approach not only leads to personal growth, but also earns respect and trust from those around you. The sense of control and self-respect that you gain by taking responsibility for your life is profound and transformative. You start to see challenges as opportunities to learn and grow. The next technique builds on this, taking us deeper into the art of living a stoic life of self-discovery. Technique number six, choose your influence wisely. Every day, whether we realize it or not, we're influenced by the people, media, and environment around us. It's like the air we breathe in, 
sometimes refreshing and other times polluted. These influences can shape our thoughts, actions, and ultimately our lives. The problem arises when negative or toxic influences start steering us away from who we truly are or want to be. Recognizing and choosing these influences wisely is crucial for our growth and well-being. As we embrace taking responsibility for our lives as discussed earlier, part of this empowerment is choosing who and what we allow to influence us. Seneca once said, to associate with people who are likely to improve you, surrounding yourself with positive, supportive and inspiring people can propel you forward. Similarly, choosing media that uplifts and educates rather than degrades and distracts is vital in your journey of self-improvement. Start by evaluating your current circle of influence. Are there people who consistently drain your energy or lower your aspirations? It might be time to reassess these relationships. In the same vein, consider the media you consume. Does it enrich your mind or clutter it? Actively seek out individuals and resources that align with your values and goals, whether it's books, podcasts, or conversations. Ensure they contribute positively to your growth. Remember, it's not about cutting people off, but about intentionally cultivating an environment that supports your journey. Technique number seven, say yes to only what matters. Our time, energy, and attention are among the most valuable things we have. Yet how often do we find ourselves saying yes to things that don't truly matter? Overcommitting or getting caught up in trivial matters can lead us away from our true goals and passions. The art of saying yes only to what aligns with our values and aspirations is a powerful skill to develop. Reflecting on our last discussion about choosing influences wisely, this principle extends to our decisions and commitments. It's about aligning our actions with our values. As Marcus Aurelius reminds us, it is not death that a man should fear, but he should fear never beginning to live. Living truly means making choices that resonate with who we are and what we want to achieve, not just filling our time with busyness. Start by assessing how you currently spend your time. Look at your daily activities and ask yourself, does this add value to my life? Does it align with my goals? If the answer is no, it's time to reconsider that commitment. This doesn't mean you should never help others or engage in leisure. It's about balance and intentionality. For example, before taking on a new project or attending an event, weigh its importance against your personal and professional goals. Will it bring you closer to where you want to be? If not, it might be better to politely decline and focus on what truly matters. Saying yes only to what's truly important helps you live a more focused, fulfilling life. It's about choosing quality over quantity in every aspect of your existence. In the next technique, we'll delve into another stoic technique that will help you maintain this focus and live in accordance with your true self. Stay tuned. Technique number eight, make others better. One of the most rewarding experiences in life is contributing to the betterment of others. Often, we get so focused on our personal development that we overlook the profound impact we can have on those around us. The true measure of our growth isn't just in how we improve ourselves, but also in how we uplift others. It's about creating a positive ripple effect that extends beyond our individual lives. As we've explored focusing on what truly matters, part of that includes the relationships we nurture and the influence we have on people. Seneca beautifully stated, wherever there is a human being, there is an opportunity for kindness. This is about extending the wisdom and strength we've gained to others. It's not just about self-improvement, it's about community improvement. Start by being a positive presence in the lives of those around you. It could be as simple as offering a listening ear, sharing insights from your own experiences or encouraging someone who's facing challenges. You could volunteer your time, mentor someone, or just make it a point to spread kindness and understanding. Remember, it's not about grand gestures. Even small acts of support can have a significant impact. By helping others, we not only make their lives better, but we also reinforce our own growth and find a deeper sense of fulfillment. In this journey of self-discovery and stoic practice, remember that your growth is a beacon that can light the way for others. If you're still with us, then I'll share a bonus tip with you. Bonus tip, start a daily journaling habit. This is a bonus tip for those who've journeyed with us this far. Did you know that Marcus Aurelius, one of the most revered Stoic philosophers, 
essentially wrote a journal. His famous work, Meditations, was never meant for publication. It was his personal reflections, his way of practicing Stoicism every day. This highlights the power of journaling as a tool for self-discovery and personal growth. Each step we've explored from observing ourselves objectively to making others better can be deepened through journaling. It's a space where you can converse with yourself, ask questions, and reflect on your daily experiences. You don't need fancy notebooks or eloquent words. Just start with your thoughts and feelings raw and unfiltered. As you write, you'll find clarity and insights that were previously hidden in the hustle of daily life. Remember what Seneca said, true happiness is to enjoy the present without anxious dependence upon the future. Journaling brings you into that present, allowing you to appreciate your journey, learn from it, and plan your future with intention. Which of the stoic techniques appeals to you the most? Drop your thoughts in the comments. Today's discussion is a small part of our larger journey of learning. If personal development and self-discovery excite you, signify in the comments by writing I'm in search of wisdom. A cluttered mind is like a messy room. You know something valuable is within, but you can't find it in the midst of the turmoil. In this digital age, where information abounds, but attention is in short supply, thinking clearly is not just a skill, it's a superpower. Fortunately, the Stoics have navigated the labyrinth of thoughts, distractions, and emotions to provide you six transformational lessons in how to think with crystal clarity. If you're tired of being lost in your own thoughts of feeling overwhelmed by the noise of the world, then this is for you. If you're new here and ready to challenge your mental status quo, click the notification bell and subscribe. Let's not just pass through life. Let us learn about it, shape it, and prosper in it. We'll begin on a journey together to master the art of clear thinking and for those who actually dare to change their perspective. I challenge you, watch till the very end. Prove to yourself that you're committed to clarity and growth. Do you accept it? Now let's begin. One, practice active listening. The art of listening is often overshadowed by the urge to speak. Yet to think clearly, we must become adept at active listening. This means fully concentrating, understanding, and responding to what others are saying, rather than formulating our next statement or letting our minds wander. Marcus Aurelius once observed, Everything we hear is an opinion, not a fact. Everything we see is a perspective, not the truth. This stoic insight underscores the importance of truly hearing others, recognizing that their perspectives offer a window into a different understanding of the world. Active listening is more than just hearing words. It's about understanding the emotions, motivations, and intentions behind them. By giving our full attention to the speaker, we not only show respect, but also open ourselves to new insights and ideas. This practice challenges us to set aside our preconceptions and judgments, allowing for a richer understanding of the topic at hand. Moreover, active listening strengthens relationships fosters trust, and promotes open dialogue. By truly hearing others, we position ourselves to think more clearly, make better decisions, and deepen our connections with those around us. It's a skill that requires patience and practice, but offers immeasurable rewards in clarity and understanding. 2. Seek simplicity. With so many options, choices, and information available, simplicity can help navigate a confusing world. To think clearly, we must learn to simplify our thoughts, our environment, and our decisions. If you've made it this far, you're truly different. Most people skim through information, but you're here diving deep, seeking wisdom. Remember the words of the Stoic philosopher Marcus Aurelius, very little is needed to make a happy life. It is all within yourself, in your way of thinking. Simplicity isn't about deprivation or minimalism, it's about removing the unnecessary, focusing on what truly matters and finding clarity amidst the noise. In our modern age, we're often pulled in a million directions. But by seeking simplicity, we can find focus and clarity. Whether it's decluttering our physical space, streamlining our commitments, or focusing on our most important goals, simplicity can be a powerful tool for clear thinking. By regularly evaluating what's truly important and letting go of the rest, we can navigate life with greater ease and clarity. 
3. Embrace the power of stillness. It's easy to lose yourself in today's world of constant notifications, endless scrolling, and endless information. The first step to thinking clearly is to find stillness. This doesn't mean you need to meditate for hours or escape to a remote cabin. It simply means taking a moment to pause, breathe, and center yourself. In this stillness, you can begin to hear your own thoughts and distinguish them from the noise. Marcus Aurelius, a Stoic philosopher and Roman emperor, once said, Nowhere can man find a quieter or more untroubled retreat than in his own soul. This is a reminder that amidst the chaos of the modern world, we have the power to find peace within ourselves. By regularly seeking moments of stillness, we can cultivate a clearer mind and a more focused perspective. For many of us, our days are filled with tasks, responsibilities, and distractions. But by setting aside just a few minutes each day to sit in silence to reflect or to simply be, we can start to see things more clearly. This practice isn't about escaping reality, but rather about grounding ourselves in it. Stillness is not an action. It's a deliberate choice to pause and reflect. It's a powerful tool that can help us make better decisions, understand our emotions, and navigate the complexities of modern life. 4. Focus on what you can control. The world is vast, complex, and often unpredictable. There are countless things outside of our control, but to think clearly, we must focus on what we can control, our actions, our reactions, and our attitude. Epictetus, a Stoic teacher, once remarked, we cannot choose our external circumstances, but we can always choose how we respond to them. This is a powerful reminder that while we can't control everything, we have agency over our own choices. In the modern world, it's easy to get overwhelmed by the sheer volume of information, events, and challenges. But by narrowing our focus to what's within our control, we can find clarity and purpose. This doesn't mean ignoring the world around us, but rather recognizing where our energy is best spent. By focusing on our own actions and reactions, we can navigate the complexities of life with grace and intention. This practice helps us avoid the trap of feeling powerless or overwhelmed and allows us to move forward with purpose and clarity. 5. Question your assumptions. We all carry with us a set of beliefs and assumptions about the world. These beliefs shape our thoughts, our actions, and our interactions. But to think clearly, we must be willing to question these assumptions. Just because a belief has been with us for a long time, doesn't mean it's accurate or helpful. Seneca, another Stoic philosopher, wisely noted, We are more often frightened than hurt, and we suffer more from imagination than from reality. How often do our assumptions born from fear or past experiences cloud our judgment or distort our perspective? To think clearly, we must be willing to challenge our own beliefs. This means being open to new information, seeking out diverse perspectives, and being willing to change our minds. It's not about doubting everything, but rather about being curious and open-minded. It's easy to go along with what we've always believed or what everyone else believes. But true clarity comes from a willingness to see the world as it is, not as we assume it to be. By regularly questioning our assumptions, we can free ourselves from limiting beliefs and see the world with fresh eyes. 6. Cultivate a growth mindset. To think clearly, we must believe in our ability to grow learn, and adapt. A growth mindset, as opposed to a fixed mindset, is the belief that our abilities and intelligence can be developed through dedication and hard work. The Stoics believed in the power of continuous learning and self-improvement. As Seneca said, as long as you live, keep learning how to live. This timeless wisdom reminds us that life is a journey of growth and discovery. In the modern world, it's easy to feel stuck or limited by our circumstances. But with a growth mindset, we can see challenges as opportunities for growth, mistakes as lessons and setbacks as chances to persevere. By cultivating a growth mindset, we can approach life with curiosity and resilience. This mindset empowers us to seek out new experiences, learn from our mistakes, and continuously strive for a better understanding of ourselves and the world around us. Navigating the complexities of our modern world requires a clear mind and a grounded spirit. These Stoic lessons offer timeless wisdom, tailored for the challenges and distractions of today. 
By integrating these practices into our daily lives, we not only enhance our ability to think clearly, but also fortify our resilience against life's inevitable adversities. Before you go, take a moment to reflect. If this video resonated with you, if you felt a spark of inspiration or a newfound clarity, then show your support. Subscribe, hit that notification bell, and give this video a thumbs up. Your engagement fuels this community and encourages the sharing of more transformative insights. Let's keep the conversation going by leaving a comment below. Simply write if you're at a loss for words. I have a clear mind. Your thoughts, experiences, and reflections enrich this environment. As a result, it has become a lighthouse for all those seeking clarity in a world often obscured by confusion. Do you want to live your best life? Do you want to get rid of bad and remove bad things in your life? Then watch this video and know 10 things to eliminate from your life right now. Most people think that they need to do more and more in order to live a great life, but the opposite is true. You need less toxic things in your life. And once you remove these 10 things, you will instantly notice how your life gets better. Number one, feeling guilty. There is nothing more pathetic than a man who feels sorry for himself. I understand that life can be very hard, but no matter what you are going through, no matter your story, a man can't feel sorry for himself because feeling sorry for ourselves only makes us weaker. It gives us excuses to fail and nothing good ever comes from it. Always remind yourself that there are many successful people out there who had it worse than you. They didn't become successful by complaining or by having a victim mindset, but by using their pain and pushing forward. So instead of feeling sorry for yourself, use your pain and rise to the top. Number two, thinking about the past. A lot of people live in the past. They don't realize that the past is gone and it will never come back. Listen, man, the only reason to go back to the past is if there's lessons to be learned. But after learning those lessons, it's time to move on and focus on the future. The moment that matters to our lives the most is now. And only a stupid would let the present moment go to waste. I know it sounds cliche, but there's nothing you can change about the past. It's already over. The only time you can do something about and change for the better is right now. Number three, waiting for the perfect moment. Most people wait for the perfect moment for everything. The perfect moment to start a new business, the perfect moment to start having kids with their wife, the perfect moment to break a habit. Guess what? The perfect moment never comes. It doesn't exist. So just do what you need to do instead of procrastinating. Number four, comparing yourself with others. Most people constantly compare themselves to others and that's why they stay miserable. Listen, comparing ourselves to others is a natural tendency but it can quickly become an unhealthy habit. Why? Because instead of focusing on our own growth and achievements, we can become fixated on what others are doing and how they're doing it. This type of comparison is not only unproductive, but it can also lead to feelings of inadequacy. We must recognize that everyone's journey is unique and what works for someone else may not work for us. We all have different journeys and paths in life. And it's important to remember that each person's journey is unique. Instead of constantly comparing yourself to others, focus on your own journey and purpose. Now, I want to emphasize that there's nothing wrong with comparison. If you're in competition against another man, but if you're not competing, don't compare yourself to others. Comparison is a thief of joy and it only serves to bring unnecessary stress and dissatisfaction in your life. Embrace your own strengths and talents and strive to be the best version of yourself. Remember that success and happiness are not measured by how you stack up against others, but by how fulfilled and content you are with your own accomplishments. So let go of the urge to compare and instead focus on your own personal growth. Number five, social media addiction. Social media is a double-edged sword. You can learn a lot, make a lot of money and improve your life massively with it, but you can also get sucked in and lose yourself in it. Most people don't consciously use social media. They scroll and constantly watch the stories of other people, and that's why their mental health suffers. Listen, when we scroll through these digital stories, we compare our tough moments with other people's moments of highlight. This makes us feel dissatisfied and jealous. Do you see how it can be harmful? 
so it's important to limit how much time we spend on social media. Think of it like visiting a library with a specific purpose. Go in, find what you need, whether it's connection, inspiration, or information, and then leave to focus on your own life. Personally, I have specific times during the day where I'm not allowed to go on social media. These are times where I do deep work, train, or spend time with loved ones, and when I'm allowed to check social media, I ask myself, am I looking for something useful here? Or am I just wasting time? When you ask yourself why you're using social media, it helps you tell if you're using it productively or just scrolling without a purpose. Lastly, if you find yourself feeling down after using these platforms, take a break, use the time to do things you enjoy in the real world, like reading a book, doing a hobby, or simply enjoying nature. By doing these things, you not only protect your mental health, but also rediscover the beauty of your own story without always comparing it to others. Number six, self-doubt. Whenever we chase our goals, there comes a point where self-doubt kicks in. This self-doubt can destroy our confidence and keep us further and further away from accomplishing our goals. Now, most motivational people will tell you to just keep believing in yourself, but that really doesn't help when your self-doubt is strong. I have found that the best way to get rid of self-doubt is to recognize that often that self-doubt is justified. Think about it. If you set the goal to become a millionaire but you've never made a million before, it's only natural to feel self-doubt. You don't possess the skills to make a million otherwise you would have done so already. So instead of forcing yourself to keep believing in yourself to the point of delusion, I want you to look at yourself and your goal objectively. Picture a 2.0 version of yourself that has already accomplished this goal, and then ask yourself, how is he able to do it and what capabilities this 2.0 version of yourself has? List them down. Those capabilities are what you need in order to remove self-doubt and achieve your goal. So chase the 2.0 version of yourself until you become him. That's the best way to deal with self-doubt. Number seven, let them go. The first thing that you need to eliminate from your life is toxic people, be it in the realm of friendship or romance. Everyone knows that you become the people you spend the most time with, and yet most people don't know how to end bad relationships. They feel obligated to stay in contact with people even if it hurts them. Listen, no matter how great of a time you once had with a person, times change. Sometimes a chapter of those people in your life is finished, and you need to see that for what it is. It doesn't matter whether you've known them for 10 years. If a person hinders your life, causes you pain, or stops you from growing, they need to go. Cut them out of your life, out of loyalty to yourself, and you don't owe anyone an explanation. In fact, it's important to end these relationships without telling everyone. Because when you keep these matters private, you not only preserve the dignity of all involved, but it also helps you with acceptance and healing. So self-reflect and deal with the issues internally instead of listening to everyone's opinion. Number eight, gossiping. We live in times where men gossip more than little girls and it may seem innocent, but gossiping is quite dark. Think about it. When you speak badly of another person, you are effectively assassinating him. You may not be assassinating him in the physical sense by taking his life, but you are assassinating his character. Assassinating someone's character creates negative perceptions by those around them who often accept the gossip they have heard as truth. On top of that, negative words spread like wildfire. As basic as this sounds, before speaking about someone, just ask yourself, what I want this to be said about me? If the answer is no, keep your mouth shut. Even when all others around you are gossiping, do not join them. Instead, surround yourself with people who value positivity and authenticity in interactions. Together you can create a culture of respectful and productive conversations, which will help you level up in life. Number nine, don't take yourself too seriously. When it comes to your goals, you should be very disciplined and serious. But there are also times to laugh and enjoy the journey. Laughing is healthy and it removes stress. That joy also makes you feel more energized and loose, which can help you get to your goals. Now there may be periods where you are extremely serious and disciplined, and that is fine. But don't turn into a self-improvement dork who takes himself so seriously. He forgets to enjoy life. Number 10. Let go of resentment. A lot of people hold grudges in their hearts without even knowing it. Whether it's against other people or something that happened to them, they have a form of hatred deep inside their heart 
and this keeps them from true inner peace. Now I understand what it's like to have that resentment. I've hated myself for a long time, so I'm not judging anyone for using it. After all, hate can be a powerful source of energy to get to your goals. But at the end of the day, hatred corrupts the soul. You can't carry on hating your heart for too long or it will consume you. So after using your resentment and hate in a productive way, you must learn to let it go. Learn to forgive others. Not in favor of others, but as a gift to yourself. Forgiveness is the real key to inner peace and happiness. If you want to level up in your life, then hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell to get updates. There's a saying that life is a journey, and rightfully so. From the greatest individuals to the weakest, everyone goes through ups and downs. Every situation is a choice, and each step in life is like a small test. Every decision leads you in a certain direction. That's why it's crucial to learn to observe human life, to watch others and the decisions they've made that brought them to this point in their lives. Learn from both the great men and the less experienced. There's a story about a sage. One day the sage was sitting under a tree and some people approached and sat down beside him. They asked the sage a simple question. How did you become so wise? The sage turned to them, looked at them for a moment and replied, Because I learned from fools, I observe their decision-making process and avoid doing the things that got them into trouble. The same holds true for your life. Let every moment of your life be filled with observations. It's the easiest way to shorten 10, 20, or even 30 years off your learning curve and position yourself ahead of the 99%. Remember that life is brimming with lessons. It's your duty as a human to remain a student throughout life. The moment you believe you're a master and have learned enough is the moment you'll stop growing. So what are some of the lessons and principles that men should keep in mind? Lesson 1. Everything is temporary. The good times and the bad. They're all fleeting. When life's great, embrace it fully and be thankful. When challenges arise, stay composed and tackle them head on. Remember, even the finest days will end someday. So if emotions threaten to overwhelm you, stay resolute and keep a clear head. Lesson 2. Happiness is a choice. Happiness is a decision that only you can make for yourself. Much of your joy comes from within and you must have control over your emotions. Just as the pursuit of physical pleasure should not consume your thoughts, true happiness is not solely dependent on satisfying primal desires, including sexual ones. Don't rely on others to create your happiness as this is a common pitfall in relationships. When you enter a relationship expecting your partner to be your sole source of happiness, it often leads to disappointment. Your happiness is your responsibility. This applies not only to relationships but to every facet of life. For example, on a rainy day, one person might find joy in the rain while another curses the weather. It's all about your mindset. Remember, happiness is a daily choice you must make. One way to cultivate this mindset is by disconnecting from social media. Social media often does more harm than good, despite its promise of bringing people closer together. In reality, it frequently achieves the opposite effect, fostering envy and discontent among users. Lesson 3. Life isn't fair. Let's face it, life hands us different decks of cards. Some start with advantages, others with none. You can complain and resent your circumstances, but the responsibility for crafting your best life ultimately falls on you. The life you dream of often lies on the other side of the challenges you're avoiding. It's like that old saying, if you seek happiness, start with discomfort. Don't wait around, take action, stop grumbling and start doing. These are the cornerstones of being a resilient and resourceful individual. Lesson 4. The Power of Being Present It's a common tendency for many of us to dwell either in the past or the future. However, residing in these realms can be quite detrimental. While it's perfectly fine to plan for the future, it shouldn't overshadow your present. Thinking about the future is essential for direction, but don't get stuck there. Let your future thoughts gently guide you as you work diligently in the present to achieve your desired lifestyle. The same goes for living in the past. Reminiscing about the good old days won't bring them back. It's living in the now that truly matters. Remember, having a purpose is the key to living each day to the fullest. 
Without it, you risk becoming a mindless wanderer stuck between past and future. Lesson 5. Taking Risks in Life The biggest risk can often be not taking risks at all. Look around and you'll find that many successful folks took action to reach where they are. Anything worthwhile typically involves some level of risk. Take for instance, being interested in someone you find attractive. If you want to win them over, you've got to step up and start a conversation. Now that might seem intimidating, especially for many guys who freeze up when that opportunity arises. But whether it's in the realm of dating or leaving your regular job for a more promising career, most things worth having come with an element of risk. The choice, my friends, is yours. Embrace the risk and truly live. Lesson 6. Passion and Career Your work is a significant part of your life. Imagine someone who loves programming. They wouldn't suddenly switch to civil engineering even if coerced such a shift would likely lead to inefficiency. Your time is precious. So dedicate it to developing skills that will advance your career. Many people squander half their lives pursuing careers or skills dictated by others, like their parents or friends rather than pursuing their own interests. If you're unhappy with your chosen field, you won't find satisfaction in your career and this discontent will spill into other areas of your life. This is what we mean by investing in yourself. It should apply to your personal life too. Engage only in activities that align with your purpose and mission. Lesson 7. The Trap of Overthinking As we grow, we tend to overanalyze everything. Minor actions by others can send us into a spiral of thoughts and emotions. Maybe someone didn't bid you farewell at work and suddenly you're convinced they despise you. These thoughts can eat away at you, even if the other person had no ill intent. Stop feeding these thoughts and most importantly don't conjure up imaginary scenarios in your head. The remedy to overthinking is action. So when you feel yourself sinking into that abyss of thoughts, break free through action. Lesson 8. Your mind is your greatest ally and adversary. The most crucial life lesson revolves around your mindset. You are the architect of your life's outcomes. You can't blame others for your failures or shortcomings. In almost every case, your thoughts determine whether you succeed or fail. Train your mind to be your greatest supporter. It's with you for life. Your reflection should elicit self-endorsement as if your mind sees you as a role model. This is a shared trait among all successful individuals. Remember, life is a precious gift to be cherished daily. Keep learning as a lifelong student and apply these invaluable life lessons early. You're unlikely to regret it. By recognizing the power of your thoughts, you can harness your mind's potential to steer your life in the direction you desire. Embrace challenges as opportunities to mold your mindset into a force that propels you forward. Be vigilant against negative self-talk and doubt for they can hinder your progress. Nurture a positive and growth-oriented inner dialogue, one that acts as a constant guide towards your aspirations. Remember, your mind can be both a loyal companion and a formidable opponent, but ultimately it's your perspective that determines which role it plays. Continually cultivating self-awareness for understanding the intricate workings of your mind is a journey that never truly ends. Just as a garden attends to their plants, tend to your thoughts with care. Weed out negativity and doubt, replacing them with the seeds of belief and resilience. Your mind's landscape is malleable, shaped by the thoughts you choose to water and nurture. Subscribe to this channel for more contents.